Hang on. Good afternoon. Welcome to our virtual celebration of Mass here at St. Robert Bellarmine Parish. This Mass is being celebrated in loving memory of Ray and Mildred Tapco, Sheila Hemke, and Bob Markey. Today, we celebrate Palm Sunday of the Passion of Our Lord. Our opening hymn is All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who was an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit to share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. 
Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient even to the point of death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed him that bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take and eat. 
This is my body. Then Jesus took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to Jesus in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. And Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to Jesus, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Jesus took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then Jesus said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. Jesus advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as my will, but as you will. When Jesus returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, Jesus prayed again. My Father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then Jesus returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then Jesus returned to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately, Judas went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And Judas kissed Jesus. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left Jesus and fled. 
Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following Jesus at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed Jesus. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in Jesus' face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophecy for us, Christ. Who is that that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you were talking about. As Peter went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, Peter denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, Peter began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately, a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter went out began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They found him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. And they said, What, what is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, Jesus depart, or Judas departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some 